mentality. He lives with a lot of the old linemen. And he's got the same attitude. Polaris with a defender in his face and a terrific cut to make the catch in the end zone for D.J. Woods. Did that on the last drive. You know, they had Marty Gilliard last year who scored 11 touchdowns, had almost 1,200 yards receiving. And it's almost as if the other three guys now can each take a chunk of that and do their thing. Here's Woods again with the catch. Maybe got back to the line of scrimmage. Lauren Bell, the first guy there, along with Knox and Jacobs. Play to three. Tenth play of the drive from the five. Claros again calls his own number towards the goal line, and the push gets him in. Following Evan Davis for the touchdown. So it will be back to third down and six. Caleros five of seven tonight on third down situations. Under big pressure and all the way back at the five, thrown down by Logan Harold. Another big play by the defensive tackle. Big play is an understatement. Logan Harold twice now in this football game has flat out beat the guy over him trying to block him. He does it right there. He just picks an edge on the center. It's a screen play, so he gets a little bit of a free run, but he gets in there so quick, Caleros can't set up and let the screen develop. See right there, they're trying to throw the screen. They're trying to let, release somebody on the left side. A low field goal at this type of field position. Second time they've been able to start in Cincinnati territory, and the pass complete to Jalen Saunders, the freshman from Elk Grove, California, and a first down. First and 10 from the 20. House goes in motion. Colvin with time, has a man wide open at the goal line. Touchdown, Fresno State. Rouse out of the backfield, the motion man for six. Talk about needing to make a play. Fresno State comes up with it. How did it all start? Ryan Colburn getting this drive started to Jalen Stones with the slant. Now they get Robbie Rouse outside on the wheel route. It looks like Cincinnati recognizes Robbie Rouse. Good discipline, turns up the sidelines. But what makes this play happen is Ryan Colburn, his eyes. In the midst of that play, he looks to the post inside. That's why the linebacker drops coverage and then knows to come back and hit the wheel route for the touchdown. The lefty Gessling for the extra point. 20 yards from Colburn to Rouse. Give the assist, too, to Logan Harrell, who had the big sack to set them up in scoring position. With four receivers, he'll go instead to Pede out of the backfield. Bottled up and a loss on the play. Kyle Knox, Chris Carter are all in on the stop. Ben Jacobs was there as well. Last year with a broken left hand, and he's recorded the fastest 40 time for a defensive lineman in Fresno history, Chris Carter. Trying to make a push at Caleros again. Catches him from behind, knocks the ball loose. Bulldogs got it. Donovan Pritchard jumping on it, and credit Chris Carter for making a play with 39 seconds to go in the half. We talked to Chris Carter, and he said, I'm going to get the edge, but I'm a smarter player now. There's going to be times that I get up field, I get the edge, the quarterback steps up, I'm going to put on the brakes. I don't want to run past the quarterback. NFL scouts are watching that play right there, saying not only can he get the edge, but he's an intelligent football player. He doesn't want to just run past the quarterback and be selfish. He knows there's a lot of sacks and a lot of sack fumbles if you dip back underneath and pursue the quarterback as he steps up in the pocket. Pump pissing, fist pumping. Right now he gets into the huddle after that incompletion, sends a message to his team. He's ready to make a play. Coburn scoops it up. Throws caught wide open at the 25-yard line. And down to the 15, eBay and Duque out of the backfield. 
Just talking about Ryan Colburn playing with great energy, great emotion right now. Bad snap, but look at the poise to keep his eyes downfield. Looking, looking, instead of running, we've seen him run. A 16-yard strike. And Fresno scores off the turnover. And that is what the doctor ordered for Fresno State. And really the guy that has brought energy to this thing is Ryan Colburn. After a horrific start, Ryan Colburn has really come alive, and that was a big-time throw by Ryan Colburn. The extra point to tie it. Ryan Colburn able to finish the plays. Logan Harrell and Chris Carter, a couple of defensive linemen, setting them up in good field position. To beat zone coverage in the red zone, you have to throw the ball with anticipation. You have to throw it in the holes. Let's run the play, and you're going to see. This ball is going to come out of Ryan Colburn's hands before Jamel Hamler breaks open. That ball is thrown with anticipation and ball speed. That is the only way to beat that two-deep coverage in the red zone. You can tell there's been thousands of reps between Ryan Colburn and Jamel Hamler right there. Nice play by Cameron Cheatham. Third and three. <laughs> Colburn converts another one into Cincinnati territory. Hamler with the catch. His fifth of the night down to the 44-yard line. Timeout. Fourth and two for Fresno. Play fake, the pass. Caught for the first down inside the 30. Top of Dalmoy Payow with the catch. And I am so glad he got involved in the football game just so you had to say his name. <laughs> I love the play call. They go hard action, downhill run. They get Ryan Colbert on the move on the bootleg. And Tapu Dalmoy Payow gets out, sneaks out in the flat on the under route, makes a nice catch, flipping his hips to get around to catch the ball and gets the first down. Top of move the chains. First down from the 28. More play action. The deep ball down the middle, looking for Devin Wiley. Hulls it in for the touchdown. Strikes on three straight possessions for Fresno. I'll tell you what. We talked about when this drive started, the most important drive of the football game for both teams. Fresno State, great resilience. I love how Jeff Grady came out and called that series. You look at the touchdown pass especially. Ryan Colburn told me we are going to hit a post in the red zone. Devin White, look how quick he gets up on the corner, sets his angle, decent throw, great catch by Devin Wiley. Love the aggress aggressiveness by Jeff Grady and the coaching staff for the Bulldogs. Just his second catch of the night, but good for 28 yards in the score, and Fresno State, the original BCS buster. Second down and 10. Cincinnati has struggled since the two early touchdowns. DJ Woods tries the end around, nothing doing. Five yard loss on the play. Randy Stewart talked about number 16, Philip Thomas, being a dynamic athlete in the secondary, being an instinctive player, and that's what you see there. He comes out of the safety spot. And he's, he's got great athleticism. He's Like Trent said, he gets the ball out of his hand really well. He knows where he's going with the football, and that's, that's big. 4-0 as a starter last year, and a big hit. Disha Dunn at midfield, laying out Pede. Those are really good plays by the Fresno, Fresno State Bulldogs secondary. We're going to watch this play, and then I just want you to take a nice listen to what Disha Dunn does here at the end of the football play. He recognizes the quick screen. Third quarter, Fresno State has scored on its last three possessions, and let's talk about QBU here in the Valley. Billy Volick from 95 to 97, over 6,500 yards.
Billy was a great competitor, gritty player. Teammates loved playing for him. Whoop, there's our guy in the booth, David Carr. Went on to become a number one draft choice with the Houston Texans. I've already said how great I think Davis. is. <laughs> How about Paul Pinniger now? He's got the best stats of any of you guys. He did a nice job. Frank Signetti led offense when calling plays for Paul Pinniger. Got the most out of Paul Pinniger. And then there's Tom Brandstater most recently. And play the next down and, and convert this third and long. It's coming. Caleros to Gadouli, the tight end, and cannot get away from Philip Thomas. The safety coming up to make the stop. 48-yarder for Jake Rogers, his long 54. No good. Pushed it right. Cincinnati was in the Bowl Championship Series last year in the Sugar Bowl after back-to-back -back Big East championships. Looking for the three-peat this year. Their only conference loss in the past two seasons was back in 2008 to Connecticut. They're riding an 18-game regular season winning streak. Ten of those have been on the road. And that streak in jeopardy as we start the fourth quarter, trailing Fresno State 21-14 to on a big first weekend for the non-AQs. Utah knocking off Pittsburgh. BYU beat Washington. TCU a winner tonight over Oregon State. And now Fresno trying to take down the Big East champs. Ryan Colburn, the puck fake, going deep, has his man Evans. Touchdown, Bulldogs, 59 yards on the strike. Wow, talk about a way to come out in the fourth quarter. There are certain coaches that when you come out of breaks want to be really conservative, and then there's coaches that just want to attack. Jeff Grady, obviously one that wants to attack. He gets a matchup. He gets a matchup he likes with number 11, Rashad Evans, in the slot, and Ryan Colburn delivers an absolute dime. That is a hard ball. That ball has to have, be firm with an arc. you got to control speed and trajectory. Ryan Colburn with his best throw of the night. 28 unanswered points for Fresno State. Let's send it back to the studio. Harris pulls it back. Juking his way around defenders, keeping the play alive, but not long enough. Travis Brown with the sack. They had nine sacks all of last year. They've got four tonight. Zach Kolaris does a great job extending this play. Looks like they're designing some kind of wide boot post route in the middle of the field. He's extending the play. He's running around, but at some point, just throw the ball away. You can't afford in this time of the game to take the big sack, but credit Travis Brown for pursuing relentlessly and getting there and finishing off the play. They gave up 28 points a game last year, and Pat Hill spelled it out for us. He said, our key to our season is for our defense to play to a much higher level. And they are tonight. Logan Harrell, second sack for him. Logan Harrell has been a madman in this game tonight. That is the third or fourth time he has come absolutely free in the inside and made a huge play on the quarterback. And they've all come in big D and D situations. They really need a play. 72, Evan Davis leans from the waist. Offensive lineman death position. You cannot bend from the waist. You gotta bend from the hips. Allows Logan Harrell to get around him. Another big play by the Dogs defense. Third and 26. down again Chris Carter his second of the night the Cincinnati Bearcats have no answer for Chris Carter we talked about it early on they had a lot of things they wanted to do they have not done a good job of executing on any of them Chris Carter just continues to beat the Cincinnati Bearcats offensive line with the speed edge and then the back right there trying to help out just gets run over Chris Carter dominating this game. Chris Carter and Logan Harold. Darns out to the 22. Here comes Harold again with some help from Chris Lewis. 
seventh sack of the night. This Fresno State defensive front is just having their way with Cincinnati's offensive line. Fresno State's playing some soft covers to one side of the field, usually the field side. Caleros hit, balls loose. Alex Hoffman able to dive on it. But I think it was big number 77, Logan Harrell again, who jarred it loose. How many times are we going to see this tonight? Fresno State's defensive line, Logan Harrell again. The clean rush around Alex Hoffman. There is nothing you can do as a quarterback. You're back there. You're Remains to be seen whether that will be next year and whether they will have to cough up $5 million to do it. But Boise State and Nevada also going to Mountain West at a big block at the line of scrimmage, trying to clear a path for Wiley. Oh, my goodness. Now, Jamel Hamler, the receiver for Fresno State, if you talk to any of the teammates, they will say this guy is the leader of the group. He is a work hard guy, blue collar, um, great receiver, and he'll do the dirty work. And he comes in there on that play and sets an all time dick leader. He comes in from the edge right now, and Cameron Cheatham, the strong safety, he gets caught up. He wants to read the reverse and just doesn't see Jamel Hamler coming in there. Those are kill shots that receivers absolutely just lick their chops for, and it's a clean hit all the way. Nice play by Jamel Hamler. Opportunity for this football team. They will be better because of it, but how about Fresno State? How about starting the game like they did, coming back and winning this football game, held Cincinnati score this the last 41 minutes of the game, and all started on a huge third and six stop. Logan Harrell busting up a screenplay, and from there on out, they unleash the dogs. They continue a big weekend for the non-BCS schools as Fresno State joins Utah, TCU, and BYU as winners over BCS opponents. And they'll pass the baton off to Boise State, taking on Vitek on Monday night. I'm so impressed. You know, Jim Sweeney, the grandfather of Fresno State Bulldog football, instilled one value that will forever last with Fresno State football, and it's physical and mental toughness. At the end of the night, what this came down to was the physical and mental toughness by the Fresno State Bulldogs to overcome a horrific first 25 minutes of the game, but they kept believing in themselves. They dug deep, and they made the plays they needed to get back in this football game. Jim Sweeney's watched this game somewhere. Very proud of Pat Hill and this football team. 28 on answer points as Ryan Colburn ties a career high with four touchdown passes and a 28-14 win over Cincinnati. Coming up next on ESPN 2, it's baseball tonight. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports.